The Aldol reaction is a truly remarkable way to make carbon-carbon bonds. It's such a powerful tool that is used widely in organic synthesis, and Mother Nature makes good use of it too. An aldol reaction is a key step in the synthesis of fructose, which is then transformed into glucose. And in that key step, two three-carbon pieces are joined to make a six-carbon sugar. The doubling of carbons in an aldol reaction is a recurring theme that you'll see here. There are two versions of the aldol reaction. One is an addition reaction, and the other is called a condensation reaction. But first things first, we'll look at the addition reaction. The aldol reaction is a reaction of aldehydes and ketones, but the ketones are more complicated, and I'm going to focus on the aldehydes. Here's a generalized formulation. When you keep the reaction mixture cold, treatment of an aldehyde with sodium hydroxide creates a new molecule that has twice the number of carbons. Now, as strange as this might look, it turns out it's not too hard to learn. This molecule is composed of two aldehydes joining together in a special way. So I'm going to mark the carbons of the aldehyde so that we can follow them. I'm going to put blue dots at the carbonyl carbon and the alpha carbon. Here's the carbonyl carbon and the alpha carbon. And this used to be a carbonyl carbon and the alpha carbon. All these aldol reactions that I talk about are going to have this same kind of pattern. We have a carbonyl and an alpha carbon in the aldehyde starting material. And we have four carbons, also in a box, in the product. If you number these carbons, one, two, three, four, the carbonyl is on the one carbon and the hydroxyl group is on the three carbon. And this R group, which I'm marking in a bright color here, is attached to the product twice. It's attached once at the two carbon and once at the four carbon. So we always have the structural pattern in the addition reaction, a 1,3-hydroxyaldehyde, and the alkyl group appears on the two and four carbons. Let me give you a couple examples. We could treat pentanyl with these conditions. Keep the reaction cold. I'm going to mark the first two carbons of the aldehyde, the carbonyl and the alpha carbon, just like I did above. And here, and look where they end up, just like above. The carbons of the R group are one, two, three, and they show up twice. One, two, three, and one, two, three. So this rather complicated looking product comes from a very simple starting material. And it fits the pattern that we've shown before. The two carbons in the box and the aldehyde now show up twice, two pairs, one, two, three, four, in the product. The R shows up twice. So there are two keys to noticing that this is an aldol product. One, that it's a 1,3-hydroxyaldehyde. And two, that on the two and four carbons, you have the same thing attached. Here's another example. Treatment of this aldehyde with the same conditions makes this aldol product. I'll put the blue boxes around the core carbons in the starting material and product. We'll take these carbons of the aldehyde starting material and the four carbons, one, two, three, four, of the aldol product. Here's one carbon of the alkyl group that's attached. It's the carbon of a benzyl group. And that benzyl group shows up twice in the product. I put a dot with the benzyl carbon. So the aldol addition product always fits the same pattern. It might be easier to remember if we take a careful look at the mechanism. The alpha hydrogen of an aldehyde is acidic, and in the presence of base, it's reversibly removed. This puts a negative charge on the alpha carbon. That hydrogen is especially acidic because when it's removed, the anion is resonance stabilized. This carbon has a lone pair of electrons that can be shared. That carbon can act as a nucleophile. And we know that nucleophiles add to carbonyl compounds. So when you put those two things together, it's not such a big surprise that an aldehyde reacts with another molecule of itself. Nucleophile adding to carbonyl like it usually does. You've just tied two molecules of aldehyde together by making a new carbon-carbon bond. And here it is. It's got a negative charge on the oxygen, which will be removed when it's protonated by water. So here's the final product. You see the one, two, three, four carbons. They go in our box. And the R that we started out with in the aldehyde is now twice in the product, once on the two carbon and once on the four carbon. 
So this is the mechanism of the allyl addition reaction. One molecule of aldehyde is turned into an enolate, which makes it a nucleophile, and that enolate adds to another molecule of aldehyde, which is typical of aldehydes, nucleophilic addition. That makes a new carbon-carbon bond because the nucleophile is a carbon. And in the process, of course, we've turned a carbonyl group into a hydroxyl group. So now we have a 1,3-hydroxyaldehyde. Now let me show you something we can do with these products. This is the aldol addition product I showed you at the beginning. When this molecule is treated with base and heated, it causes dehydration. Now we don't normally see dehydration in base, but we do in this case because it makes an alpha-beta unsaturated aldehyde. That conjugated double bond is much easier to make. So now we have an alkene aldehyde, what we call alpha-beta unsaturated aldehyde. And when we look at the specific examples I showed you earlier, heating this one with space makes this alpha-beta unsaturated aldehyde. And here's the bottom one. Well, you get the picture. They all fit exactly the same pattern. The allyl addition product is a 1,3-hydroxyaldehyde. And the product, once you dehydrate it, is an alpha-beta unsaturated aldehyde. In every case, the R group appears twice, on the second carbon and on the fourth carbon. Now, I told you there's two versions of the aldol reaction. Does this tell you what the second version is? After all, we do the aldol addition reaction in the presence of base. We keep it cold. If we don't keep it cold, but use gentle heating, the aldol addition product immediately dehydrates. So we have what's called the aldol condensation reaction. So the condensation reaction is just like the aldol addition followed by dehydration. We double the number of carbons, look at the blue boxes, the arrangement is just the same. In the product, we have four carbons that came from the aldehyde, and the alkyl group appears twice in the product, once on carbon two and once on carbon four. So that's the aldol reaction. There's an addition version and a condensation version. If you want the hydroxyl group present in the product, you'll need to run under cold conditions. Otherwise, you might as well just run it warm, and the reaction will produce the alpha-beta unsaturated aldehyde directly. This is very powerful chemistry, both in the organic synthesis lab and in biology. It's a key reaction in metabolism.